Hallelujah, Hosanna! 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 Hallelujah, Hosanna!
in my life. That's why 
Father, we are assembled together here for you. You are all that matters. Without you, we are worthless. We are useless. We are no value. And we are worthless. You are all that matters. Just you and I, Jesus. your cancers to us. You take us from where we are where we ought to be. Let the eyes of our understanding the light in the tonight. That all glory will be in us. Let there be illumination. Thank you, precious Holy Spirit. For confirming the world with signs and wonders tonight. To the glory of God the Father. In the name of Jesus. And amen. Put those beautiful hands together for Jesus. Thank you, precious Holy Spirit. Hallelujah to Jesus. You may be seated in the Holy Ghost. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father, tonight. Glory to God. I trust that you were blessed yesterday. I know because this world is new every morning. This evening we're going to read from the book of Isaiah. Isaiah chapter 55 and verse 11. Isaiah 55 and verse 11. Glory to Jesus. So shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth it shall not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish that which I please, and it shall prosper in the thing whereunto I send it. Hallelujah. Amen. So shall my word be that go forth out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me void, for he shall accomplish that which I please, and he shall prosper in the thing whereunto I send it. We are speaking today on unstoppable. You know, I broke our team into three. You remember yesterday? Cultivating unstoppable hunger for the word of God. Yesterday we treated cultivating. Today we'll be treating unstoppable. And then uh, we will look, be treating hunger tomorrow. But whether it is cultivating, it is the word of God you are cultivating. Whether it is unstoppable, it is the word of God that is unstoppable. Whether it is hunger, the whole thing equals to the word of God. I know we are together here. So yesterday we took our time to Look at that word, cultivating. And we established that to cultivate means to prepare, to make ready a land, a ground. And then we made it clear that the land and the ground we are cultivating, we cultivated yesterday, is the ground of 
your heart. The ground of our heart. Hallelujah. So, having led that background, I know we are flowing together. So when we are saying unstoppable, now we are going to be combining, bringing it, trying to fuse the two of them together for deeper understanding and clarity. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I chose to pick a word which is a name we'll find in the book of Exodus chapter 3 and verse, uh, sorry, Exodus chapter 6 and verse 3, Psalms 83, 18, Isaiah 12, 2, and then another component I want to combine with it, you'll find it in the book of Ephesians chapter 1 and verse 7, Galatians 1, 4, and Galatians 3, 13, uh, to do a background as you flow. Now, I want to look at the word Jehovah and look at the three tenses that illustrates that name. The word Jehovah has three tenses. I like to look at what the tenses are past, present, and future. That is what is combined in that name. If you go to these scriptures I quoted, it will give clarity. Um, there's a reason why I want to bring that. And then the, it, 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 it has comparison. It's exactly the same way that redemption applies the same thing that the word redemption carries. Because in redemption, redemption also do, talks about what God has done, what he is doing, and what he will do. You can see the similarity. Hallelujah. Um, now, I have to bring these things, uh, present this background because this tenses has something to do about an unstoppable process that cultivating the word of God results in the life of an individual. Are you, are you following me? Just follow me carefully this evening. So, let me now get to that word as unstoppable. The word unstoppable means something that cannot be prevented from continuing or stopped. That which is unable to stop. That, you can now begin to understand why I choose the word Jehovah and redemption to do a foundation. Because when you talk about Jehovah, you're talking about, I said what? Yeah? It did past, present, and future, which means it's a process, it carries something that cannot be stopped. Are we together? Are we together? Yes, Let me put it this, this way around. What God kickstarted and is kickstarting in every willing yielded heart by his word in this assembly is a wholly prepared heart that no thing, being, situation, circumstances, and challenges of this life can stop. Hallelujah. If you caught what I said now, a cause for a dance. If you caught the statement, because this is ultimately what God is going to bring about in the life of everyone that the Holy opens up to. This release that God is, or the outpouring of God in these days of our meeting. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. You know, as you, you release your heart, as you use your heart to the Word of God, the Word of God cultivates in you an unstoppable quest. It has the capacity. The, the, it has an inherent ability. That is what the book of Isaiah told us. When we read the book of Isaiah chapter 55 and verse 11. It says, it says, So shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me for it. it must accomplish that which 
I send it to. Now, I bring it back to our discourse yesterday. Remember, we are talking about the ground of your heart. Cultivating an unstoppable hunger. And we are using the land and farm as a typology to bring home to make for clearer understanding of what we are discussing. Are, you, are we together here? Yes, sir. Now, now we, ask, we say that the word of God, word that goes forth out of the mouth of God cannot turn to him for it. Now, let's get back to that illustration. Now, this is a land. This is a farm. By the time you have removed the seeds, you have weeded it, you have cultivated it, one thing happens. You have made that land, you have prepared that land don't forget, our just if you, if, you, if you follow up with what we say yesterday, you will follow me better. Now, you have prepared the ground. You have cleared the ground. Now, what you have succeeded in doing is that you have created an unstoppable, unpreventable, I mean, a ground that something will readily grow up in. Let's put it this way. If you get sand now, um, let me still ask elementary, what, la what land is suitable for plantation? Eh? Clay soil? Eh? Sandy soil? No. Okay, which one? <laughs> Let's not do politics here. <laughs> this one and this one. Now, you have got your domi soil and it is here. You have cleared it. There were bushes, there were trees, and you cut them down, cleared it. Now, what state have you put the land? You have put it in a state of that nothing can stop it from growing from things growing on it, true or false? Sure. It's either you bring in seeds, the right seed, and plant there. It will grow. If you don't plant it, what will happen after a few days? Things will begin to grow there. Are we together? Yeah. Now, we are talking about a process of preparing and clearing your heart. Making it ready so that the word of God now comes unstoppably. It grows by itself. Are we together? No, because no heart. Now, remember we are talking about land now. But we are using your, your heart now. We are using land as an illustration. No land is permitted to be followed. Is it possible? Something must grow eh? in the same way. Something must grow in the land of your heart. Now, but what we are saying, just like a farmer gets to his farm or her farm and then chooses, selects the crops, the seedlings, he wants to plant in his land. You are to also deliberately cultivate the land of your heart and choose the seeds, seed the, choose the crops, choose the trees that you want to plant on the ground of your heart. Now, it's critical because either you do it or they do it for you. I don't want to dwell on that. I want to focus on the one you do yourself because your heart must not be followed. Your heart must not be what? Something must be growing there. Are we together? Yes. 
Exactly as we established yesterday, that words, we established yesterday, hold on first. As you release your heart to the word of God, the word cultivates in you an unstoppable quest. I already said that. Your responsibility is only to submit your heart. The way the land is at your mercy, make your heart available at the mercy of the word of God. This is your work. If you make your heart available to the word of God, it will amaze you. You know, if I said something yesterday, I said that seeds do not die. You remember that? You remember that? We say here that seeds do not die. So what you do is that you remove seeds and plant another seed. If you do not replace a seed there, that one where they go still grow. Can I say something now? Now this explains why that several men and women who have been born again who has confessed and professed Jesus before many still manifest certain characteristics that is not consistent with the new creation life did you get that? because the seed that was in their heart that new, by being born again has been cut off. They did not plant. Let's look at the scriptures now. Let me show something. Second Corinthians. Second Corinthians. Or let's look at Mark chapter eleven, verse twenty-four. First of all, Mark eleven. And verse 24. 11 24. Wow. Um, that's not the scripture I want. Hold on there. You give me Second Corinthians chapter. Second Corinthians uh, chapter ten. Second Corinthians chapter ten. Yes. Give me Second Corinthians chapter ten. Verse four. I think I will read up to five. Mm -hmm. Said so, for the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. Watch it. Verse five. Verse 5. Now watch it. He said, Casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. Now, this shows you what grows in the heart and how it grows. Did you see there? It means that what grows in the heart are imaginations, knowledges, and thoughts. Abi? Imagination. What again? Knowledge and thoughts. And all these things are transmitted by words. W-O-R-D-S. Words. 
and we established yesterday like like seeds that words are seeds as far as that is concerned so as seed do not die words do not die That's why parents must be very careful. What you say over your children. That's why parents must be very careful. Don't open your mouth and say anything. Because you have the mouth. Because you can talk. That's why also we must be careful what we say to ourselves. And what we say about ourselves, about our situation, about whatever around us. Because the scripture says in the book of Proverbs, you shall have what you say. What it simply means is that words do not die. That's why at times the experiences people are having today was a result of what said sown years back. By the time it's harvest time, you may not realize you said it. Ignorant will make you to begin to cry and say, and even claim that somebody is undoing you, somebody is attacking you, somebody is oppressing you. When you are ripping off of seeds you sow. So what God is helping us to discover, I sow the seed, I uproot it and plant another one. True or false? You have the right to plant a tree. And then you also have the capacity to also remove the tree and plant another one. And then, don't forget that when the land has been made ready, has been prepared, it positions that land, it makes that land, puts it in a state of unstoppableness. What do you mean by that? It means it is positioned in a way that nothing stops growth. Once a land is cultivated, they are inevitably will be growth. So, that is why we are talking about on cultivating unstoppable hunger for the word of God. Which means, once you have prepared your ground, you have removed it, you begin to plant God's word. I, I, I know by tomorrow it's going to be very powerful here. Because I'll summarize by, we are going to summarize this program with practicality. That's why I'll advise tomorrow, if you know anybody that is sick, bring him. If you know anybody that is blind, bring him. If you know anybody that is deaf, bring him. And everybody that you don't bring him. Even if there's somebody that dies overnight, bring the person to this place tomorrow. Because the Bible says in our opening text, it says, So shall my word that goes out of my mouth be. It cannot return to me for it. It will fulfill. It will accomplish. It will bring to fruition. It will make happen whatever it is sent to do. Hallelujah. Yeah. Praise the Lord Jesus. Yeah. There's one thing that happens with the word of God. You know, as you're hearing it now. It's coming. What the scripture said in the book of Jeremiah is happening. Let me read the book of Jeremiah so you know the extra, what is going on now. Jeremiah, Jeremiah chapter... That should be Prophet Jeremiah. Mm. 
Glory to God. Thank you, precious Holy Spirit. Jeremiah 29. Sorry, Jeremiah 1 and verse 10. Jeremiah 1 and verse 10. And we read it together. It says, See, I have this day set thee over the nations and over the kingdoms to root out and to pull down. To destroy and to throw down, to build and to plant. Hallelujah. Now, I think let me bring in another scripture and we'll put it together. Okay, let me go ahead with this one first of all. Now, let me show you something. The nations and the kingdoms spoken about here in our own circumstance is your heart and senses. And if you remember what we read in the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 4 and 5, you can now appreciate where we're going. Now, and what happens as the word of God comes? The Bible says in the book of Romans chapter 10 and from verse 9, if you read down, it said, Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Now, so, as the word of God is entering you, as you're listening to God's word, there is a casting down going on. There is a routine out going on. There is a pulling down and at the same time, there is a planting and there is a building going on. You didn't say amen to that. Amen. Glory to God. That was why David could not contain himself when he discovered what happens. At the presence of God and in the house of God, he shouted. He said, oh! How he frees my heart. How it makes me joyful and fulfilled when they say, let's go to the house of God. If people understand what it means to find themselves in God's presence. They'll spend more time in God's presence than they spend in entertainment places. And places of eating and drinking. Because this is where there is real pleasure. Hallelujah. Amen. That's why I normally say, I love the word of God. I love the word of God. And tomorrow I will sing my hymn. You know my hymn. Because I love the word of God. I, 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 the word of God pleasures me. Hallelujah. Beloved of God, I want you to understand that you have the responsibility to declare and prepare your heart. This is a process that bets non-stop hunger. For no land is permitted to be followed. There must be sprouts. Either you clear the land and plant your choice seeds, or tars and weeds will take over. Cultivating unstoppable hunger for the word of God. You know, if the, 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 this Second Corinthians ten verse four actually opens up to us in detail. What is the tars and weeds I talked to? Because they come in form of thoughts. 
imaginations and knowledge. Which means we need to do what the scripture says in the book of Proverbs. Guide your heart with all diligence. How do you do that? You must be mindful and careful of the books you read, the friends you keep, the movies you watch, the companies you keep. Have I mentioned the books you read? Now, why are those things important? They are the thing that informs your thoughts, that enables your imagination, that forms your knowledge. Are we together here? That is why I keep saying that there are persons and people you may need to, at a point in your life, block, whether on WhatsApp, whether on Instagram, or give them distance as friends in a bid to ensure that the thoughts, the imaginations, and knowledge you carry is not infiltrated. Just like, you know that when you have cultivated and put your seeds, you also guide against us. <laughs> your ground. If you do not, you find yourself helpless. Remember, like I've taught, I did teach you this program. Let me bring it in to, for clarity. Because these things are part of what we talk about. This process is part of our, of our choices you make. And I've established in this place that at the point of choice making, you are at liberty. You can choose not to even believe in God. You can choose not to read the Bible. You can choose you can choose whatever. Now, at the point of you're making the choice, you are liberty. to you. I hope you know. It's your right. You have the freedom. Even if somebody is wanting to, but the person is wasting his time, until you agree to the person, that's what the choice is. But see one thing you cannot run away from. When you are done making your choice, your choice turns around and becomes your driver. And when choice drives you, it drives you like a drunkard. It drives you like a mad person. It runs your life like a vehicle without brake. You don't have control when choice begins to ride you. Are we together here? So you have to choose. You have to commit to making, choosing the seeds to plant. Some people have their life go this way and this way. Because of wrong things they have planted. You know, some people believe that there are times to be sick and times to not be sick. It's a general belief of most people. Some people believe that so long as you are in the world, there are times now. You know? That is choice. But you also know that there are others that believe that they have no business with sickness. Tomorrow we're going to handle the detail. What are the seeds you are choosing and you are planting 
on the ground of your heart. Don't forget that that person you are always with, <laughs> talking and chatting, gisting and playing. What are the contents of the gist? What are the combinations of words that is exchanged in that process? It goes a long way to determining the direction your life is going. Because you cannot plant cocoa yam and harvest yam. Even though they have relativeness, cocoa yam and yam, it will not make you to plant cocoa yam and go and harvest yam. You surely and definitely will harvest cocoa yam because that's what you planted. And the person that planted yam is entitled to do what? Harvest yam. So what are you as you have prepared the ground of your heart? Definitely, is you can't stop seeds from going there. Don't let your neighbor, your friend, your WhatsApp group, your Instagram follower, or who you are following, don't let the news, the media, plant seeds that you will not like tomorrow. That's, that's why Paul, talking to Timothy, said, study to show yourself proven to God. A workman that is a mission. And why David talking, said, your word I have hid in my heart. He simply said, your word is what I have carefully chosen and I have planted it on the ground of my heart. And then the result effect, resultant effect, that I cannot sin against you. You know, a lot of people want to battle with sin and struggle with sin. I've come to discover that nobody can stop sinning. But if you submit yourself, you will plant the right seed, you will find yourself. You look for them, you don't find them again. You have victory over them by the word of God. Because the righteousness of man is like fatal right before God. If man can by strength and by struggle, please God, Jesus wouldn't have come to die. Are you hearing me? What we do is to yield ourselves for the word of God. Uh, take the word of God and make it your plantation. You do that by engaging and making sure that the, the people who are within you, they are people who are saying what is consistent with God's word. And if anybody says otherwise, stand up to it and say no. You know, this weather, the weather that everybody says, no! Which weather? The Bible says that everything is, comes from the Father of Life, with whom there is no variable name. The scripture also says that when if you go and study the book of Genesis, when he created day and created night, he said it was uh, good. When he created sun and created the moon, he said it was good. He will now tell you that when sun is there, you know, with too much sun, it will make you. You need to rise up against it. Because when you allow those seeds, it will work. You are, because you are making them your choice. And they will shortly begin to drive you. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. So, we need to realize these truths. And then, you know, organize ourselves within the context of the word of God. Listen, all you owe yourself is to avail yourself to the word the word has an inherent capacity to clear it all and plant and build in you this unstoppable hunger. Hallelujah. No wonder a song writer said, When we walk with the Lord in the light of his word, what a glory he sheds on our way. Listen, the, when, when, you, when, when you commit yourself to God's word, the Bible said the entrance of his word is light. The light will flood your path and flood your way. Glory to God. Hallelujah. 
precious Jesus. Thank you. Oh. John chapter 15 and verse 3. I will summarize so that you can get ready for tomorrow. He said, Now ye are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. Can you see Jesus talking here? Now, which means for me to be clean, for you to be clean, take the seed, take the, of the word of God and do what? And plant it in the land of your heart. The more, the more, the more, the more I go to God's word, I discover that we are struggling about things God has made already done for us. The difficulty we are having and the a, 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 a challenge this man is facing is trying to go our own way, trying to do things the way that is conventionally acceptable. But if you go by the word of God, you discover that the easiest thing to do is to walk with God. Hallelujah. He said, you are cleansed by the word. So it's not by what you do or do not do. The word contains, the word carries the cleanser. Hallelujah to God. Hallelujah. Hey, it's wonderful. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Let's also look at the book of Ephesians chapter 5, verse 26. I think I'll be concluding from there. Ephesians 5, verse 26. Say that he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of the water by the word. Can I tell you something, brethren? The life that we are living are manipulated, are controlled. Are made happen. We are made happen, and it's been made to happen by the world. But the one you spoken and the ones you submit to, the people you submitted to speak over your life. I want to beg you in the name of Jesus. Make a quality decision tonight. The responsibility to get to a safe father. I have enabled certain things and they are working unstoppable in my life. But tonight, I come to realize by your word. And I also have the capacity to root those things out. And I removed them. And I yield to the working of your word. The only thing that will be allowed to ride this life and rule this life from now on are things that are consistent with your word. The redemption package. The totality of what you have made available for the new creation. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Let's rise up on our feet tonight. Thank you, precious Jesus. Everything is possible. Though. Everything is possible. Everything, everything, absolutely everything is possible. So it's in hand. Now, to decide to drive to the east, to the west, to the north, to the south. That is, you have to decide the direction your life to go from now on. Is it going the direction that you really wanted? As consistent with what God has said about you? If no is the answer, this is an opportunity for you to now remove the hand, this, uh, remove the hand of previous choices from the starting of your life by planting, choosing the right seeds and planting the right seeds. Nobody's pursuing you. Even if anybody's pursuing you, 
the person has capacity to pursue you to the extent to which you permit the person. I pray you understand. So tonight, I want you to approach the presence of God. Father, I come by your word. Every seed that has been growing in this land, my heart, that has become like thorns to me, that has become like thistles to my life, As we have unrestricted to the word of God. Thank you for loading us and filling us with these seeds enough to replace, to cover the land of our hearts. <laughs> aspect of love, I have to see. The aspect of quality relationship, I have to see. Oh, thank you, precious Holy Spirit. I begin to plan them. I begin to plan them. I begin to plan them. Begin to plan, 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 begin to sow your seeds. You can't go sow your seed. Leave the keyboard, sow your seed. <laughs> sow your seed. Balo Shabrahin Talabo Shabrahin Abo Deli Hanson Tedrahin Santela Bosha Tendro Nun Zambrahin Sombleh Setula Hushabrahin Abahaka. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Are you sowing seeds tonight? Go ahead, 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 go ahead. Go ahead, go ahead. Be a committed farmer. If you plant nothing, you have nothing to harvest. What you planted is what you are entitled to harvest. Go ahead and plant. Go ahead and plant. Go ahead and plant. 
Thank you, Father. In the name of Jesus. But I present your people to you. For those who are here and those who are following us online. As they have spoken to your ears, so do unto them. In the name of Jesus. Thank you for answering me. Father, is there anyone within the sound of my voice that is afflicted in any form? That affliction exists now in the name of Jesus. Everyone listening to me sick, I end that sickness now. It is gone. In the name of Jesus. Thank you tonight for what you have done. We exalt and magnify you. In the name of Jesus. Put those precious hands together for Jesus. Lord bless you. For Sunday morning, Sunday morning, hallelujah. We tell every day that the Lord has made. We have to give thanks and praise to the Lord Almighty God. Papa, do not tell me. When you have played, we go down the night. Give us big key. I play two dollars. Say, Papa, do not tell me. Oh my God, I can't see you. When we get to heaven, I know I see Jesus. Paul and Silas and Abraham, the all of them will be there. Many, many questions I want to ask, many things I want to say. But first of all, I will go to you and say, Thank you. Lord, I'm saying, Mama. I know I'm saying, Mama. I'm Thank you. 
sweat, it is sweat, it is sweat in the name of Jesus. It is sweat. Oh, in my soul today, in the name of Jesus, it is sweat, it is sweat, it is sweat in the name of Jesus. It is sweat, in my soul today. Because if I don't want it, I'm sick. It is sweat, it is sweat, it is sweat. express our gratitude to you tonight. Thank you for the privilege and opportunity to give, to share. And I express my gratitude to give. This your people have expressed in I bring your blessings upon all the works of their hands. Amen. Upon their families. Amen. Upon their homes. Amen. Upon their going out. Their Amen. Coming. They are blessed forevermore. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. I call the glory. Amen. 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 Tonight, I love you, please. Tomorrow is going to be the final of the final. Please, like I said, I want you to cause people to come. Bring people. It's going to be wonderful. God is ready to do a lot of awesome things. He's ready to confirm his word. Just be an extension. Be do a favor to that your friend, to that your neighbor. And uh, enable the person to bend his place. And the person will never forget you. Please, let's keep the time tomorrow. Our time is at AM. God bless you. I love you all, man.
Tiyama, 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 tiyama